surprise video. <laughs> hey there people, how's it going? This is Flawless from Flawless Rage 2 bringing you another video. Now, you're probably wondering what the hell the title of this video is about. Records used as packaging. Let me explain. Um, <clears throat> I recently, uh, in well, the end of 2022, sold my record collection um, to get money basically for the um, cost of living crisis that's going on. You know, I had to basically sell records to get some money. And um, uh, I'm in the process of getting them back. This is the most recent one I got. It's Because um, I Love You by Lizzo. I've covered this before, so it isn't going to be a vinyl Friday. This turned up yesterday, which was, uh, well, it's May now. I don't quite know what the date is because my phone is charging. Hang on a sec. I'll tell you what the date is. Uh, today is the 14th. So it arrived the 13th of May 23, this did. So I'm glad I've got this one back, but we're not here to talk about this. This is records used as packaging. I This has happened to me three times, okay? So you'll order a record from eBay, and um, a particular seller or sellers like to use old records to pack the package out. It's going to cost them more in postage, but, um, you know, they like to do that. And I've got a few examples here. I've actually got five examples here to show you. Um, none of these records, what I'm about to show you, I ordered. I did not order one of them. Um, they came as packaging, okay, to package the product. So this was packaged with two other records, which I didn't order, um, just to pack the packaging out. If you get what I mean, basically they're used as packing. Um, the first time this happened to me, I received this. This was last year when I ordered Ozzy Osbourne's um, Bark at the Moon um, on record. And um, this arrived in it as packaging. Just this one, this Berlioz Symphony Fantastique on Contour Records is basically what it says on the tin. It's orchestral, opera, operatic kind of, um, you know, uh, music. And um, I thought, what the fuck is going on? I didn't order this. Um, so yeah, this arrived. Um, I've got the record here. Now, none of these records I'm about to show you, like I said, I didn't order any of them and I don't care really about any of them. Maybe one of them I'm going to play, which I'll get round to, but these haven't been cleaned and I will be handling them any other way. I don't care about these records. So no comments. So like you're handling it wrong and all that. Okay. So this is the first one. That's what, that's what that one is. This is on a contour records. I like the label. But yeah, none of these have been cleaned or anything. This is what came with it. And it was used as packaging. I'm never going to listen to this. So that's a good candidate for a um, test record. So like if I get a new record player, which I actually have ordered one. Uh, when it arrives, I'll make a video of it at some point. But yeah, look at that. That record came in with the Ozzy Osbourne one as packaging. Okay, very strange. We'll move on to the next one. I ordered... Um, which did I, which one was it I ordered? I think it was a the a picture disc of Michael Jackson, um, the Thriller Twenty Five picture disc, and it had two in it. It came with this one, Mud Rock. I know Mud very well. This is probably the only one that I may listen to. Um, the Mud are a seventies um, like glam rock band. Um, they're most famous for their songs like Lonely This Christmas and um, Tiger Feet. Um, I think Tiger Feet is on here, but it's mixed in with another one, so I don't know how that's going to work. But, um, yeah, really, really strange. This is what the mud one looks like. Like I say, none of these have been cleaned, okay? I may or may not listen to this, that's why I handle it any old how. But that's on Rack Records. I know the Rack Record um, label because um, I've seen it around before. There's been a few other bands and stuff who were used over the years. But, yeah, that's what that one looks like, okay? Once again, used as packaging. The next one that came was this, in with it, as packaging, the music of Richard Claderman. Now, I saw this and I thought, I've heard that name before, Richard Claderman. One of his albums, actually his Christmas album, was used um, for the Brazilian test pressing for Michael Jackson's Dangerous. Um, but basically, they took, the old, they took one of his albums and just stuck the picture on it to see how it would look on the record, how it would sound, play, that sort of thing. And certainly... They used one of this guy's um, records. Um, so I heard of, I've heard of Richard Claderman because of that. I'd never really heard any of his music um, up to that point. But this is piano music. This is like, um, oh, what would you say it was? 
easy listening, like um, jazzy swing kind of vibe with it. And um, yeah, I'd never really heard of um, Richard Clayderman up until the point I saw the MJ press. And so I thought, that name seems familiar. This is what the record looks like. This is on Decca Records. Um, this one's actually in pretty good condition. If you was to... Look how crammed that is, though. If you was to um, clean it and play it, this actually would um, sound um, quite good, I would imagine, um, quality-wise. But once again, I'm never going to play this stuff. So, yeah, Richard Clayderman record there, which was used as packaging in with Michael Jackson. And then when the Lizzo one came yesterday, I got another two that were used as packaging. One of them is this, Louis Armstrong. Um, you know, His Greatest Years, Volume 4. I know Louis. I know Louis Armstrong. He, you know, his most, I think his most famous song, which gets used the most, is What a Wonderful World. But um, yeah, I know Louis. Um, this one is quite a thick record. And um, just trying to find a date on this. I can't really see a date on it, but this one, um, actually at the back of this one, if I show the, show you, it's on Parlophone Records, but take a look at the what it says here. EMI, Records Limited, the Parlophone, the long playing 33 and a third RPM record. Now, records haven't really been called long playing for a while, since like the... 50s and 60s because of the whole format war that went on um you can call a record long playing but you can't call it simply lp because lp belongs to columbia so i thought okay very very strange um uh it tells you on here the things to use to clean it and stuff is quite comical really Use the use of MTEX cleaning material available from record dealers. We'll preserve this record, yada, yada, yada. Um, once again, I, 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 I don't really um, listen to this kind of stuff. It's like 20, you know, you can see the tracks on here were recorded in 1928 in Chicago and stuff. So it's all been put um, together. I mean, anybody out there who likes this stuff might be able to tell me a little bit more about it. But yeah, this is, um, yeah, Louis Armstrong. Do you want to see the actual disc itself? It's on Parlophone. I know the Parlophone record label. That's what Paul McCartney was on. And I think the Beatles used Parlophone as well. But there you go, Parlophone record. That's what it looks like. It's quite a thick disc, this, but you can hear by the, if I bring it closer to the mic, you can hear it is vinyl. So that's pretty good. However, the next one is questionable. This I never heard of before. This is Mel Torme. I got this out of there and I thought, who in the hell is this? Um... And so I looked it up. Mel Torme was a, a jazz musician, a jazz singer um, from the 1950s and 60s. He's been, you know, I don't know if he's still with us, but he's been, uh, you know, had, had been going um, on quite a while. And um, yeah, I never really heard of um, this guy. And this one is um, uh, Gene Norman presents Mel Torme actually is a, <laughs> says it on the cover. Actually recorded at Crescendo, December the 15th, 1954. So you can get a rough idea of what the, is going on here. Um, and uh, that's what the back of it looks like. It's very yellowed over the years. I'm sure this would have been, you know, a pure white back in the day. Um, I don't know when this came out. As they were recorded in December 1954, I'm guessing this is from 1955, 1956-ish. I really don't know. I haven't really done the research. I wouldn't research this sort of stuff. But yeah, you can see there the tracks are recorded in 1954 and that's what's on a, um, on the thing. And he's a jazz singer. Um, I managed to find that much out. Um, but yes, uh, very, very strange. Now, what's even stranger is the disc. I'll bring it in. Now, this is a heavy beast. Okay, this is a very heavy record. Now... Um, another thing I'll point out in a minute is look at the label. The label actually is shiny and looks printed on like on a shellac record, which is like an old 78. Okay. Now, 
interestingly, um, this plays at 33 and a third, so it's regular sort of like long playing, I'll say, uh, long playing um, record, but this one, bring it to the mic, it's got a ring to it, and it's very thick. This feels like shellac, but when you take a look at the back of the sleeve, you can see their long playing micro groove flexible record. It doesn't specify if it's vinyl or if it's, you know, um, shellac. Um, I can't remember what they said micro groove was or um, vinylite as they call it. But nonetheless, that's what we got. Um, you know, long playing micro groove flexible record vinylite and all that. I don't know if that was a mixture of the two. I really don't know. But that feels like shellac. Now, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's just very, very thick vinyl. Maybe it's um, has got a bit of shellac in it. I don't know. But from the age of it, I would say there's um, there's shellac along the group there somewhere. Maybe it's a shellac record that plays at 33 and a third. I wouldn't trust that, really. Um, but it is micro groove. I haven't played any of these, um, you know, to see what they're like. I've just looked up sort of like the kind of music it is. But I found it interesting and I wanted to show you guys these really, really fucking crazy records that came used as packaging. Like I said at the beginning, I didn't order any of these. These came as packaging for another record. OK, but there you go. That one's quite a interesting label. Vogue Coral Series. I've never heard of Vogue before. The only Vogue I've heard of is the Madonna song. So, yeah, very interesting um, times going on here. But look how thick that thing is. If you know anything about these and can tell me any more, leave it in the comment section because I'll be interested to find out. But honestly, this one feels like shellac. But it, but it says it's a micro groove record, so I don't know. Also, being that age, maybe they're like mono. Um, I haven't tried them. I know the mud one won't be, but yeah, I haven't tried these things out. So I wanted to show you this and sort of like things that you can get through eBay when you order a record. Um, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna test it again. I am gonna find out um, um, who the seller was and order another record from him and see if. It comes with um, another two records packed in it because that's interesting to, to see that people are doing this. Why they do it? Well, maybe they're getting rid of their old collection. Maybe they're just sh um, shit records laying about. They don't want I mean, this is very dirty. If I shine it, you'll see how dirty the thing is. But yeah, you know, maybe they're just getting rid of their old shit that they don't want, you know, and palming it off onto other people. Thanks. So, yeah. But I suppose I suppose the upside to it is you get free records out of it. The other side to it is, you know, you can get um, records to use as testers if you're going to get a brand new um, record player. Or you might even get something that you enjoy. If they pay, you know, pack it with 80s or 90s stuff, I might be interested in it. But any of this stuff, I'm just not into. Apart from Mud, which is the, the glam rock. I know, um, like I said, Tiger Feet, so I might give that a listen and see what it's like. Give it a clean first. But yeah, I just wanted to show you these very, very strange things. These are records. I'll bring the discs in because bugger the rest of it. Like I said, I don't care about these, so don't moan at me for how I'm handling them. Right? But these basically are records that are being used as packaging. You know? So what more can you really say about this shit? I mean, you know... <laughs> very strange times but there you go that was the records that are used as packaging today i hope you enjoyed this one hope it's been informative for you if you know anything about the dates of these things like especially the um this one here which feels like shellac then let us know it does feel a hell of a lot different to vinyl a lot thicker i mean i'd go to say that feels like 180 gram vinyl but it doesn't feel like vinyl record material so, you know, let's see what it is. But if you guys can let me in on that, it'd be awesome. But yes, I think this video has gone on long enough. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Flawless and Flawless Rage 2, showing you records that um, sellers on eBay use as packaging. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe here if you're new. Turn on them post notifications to be notified every single time I upload a brand new video or stream. Also, follow me on Instagram at Flawless Rage 2. But for right now, guys, it is time for me to go. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care. 
And nothing else is left to be said today, guys. But always remember to be you, be the real you, be the true you, because there's no point in being anything else. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe, and I'll catch you later. Cheers. Bye.